I was going down the Pete Evans rabbit hole the last few days just to get ready. And man, it has been so much fun uh, between the YouTube videos, between the uh, the mainstream media stories, Tracy Grimshaw's a current affair story about you where they came to your property after your yoga session. Um, mate, it's uh, there's so many different directions I feel we could take this conversation because there's just so many uh, different themes that the media seems to love speaking about you in regards to. But essentially, I was saying to my wife last night, he, he believes food is essentially medicine. He believes love and connection is a good thing for you. He believes we have capacity to influence our immune system. He believes we should do things that we love. I, I don't really understand what the issue is. <laughs> so I thought perhaps as a way of introduction, I mean, um, I will have let everyone who doesn't listen from Australia uh, know your background here on Australian TV. People here are going to know a lot about you. Where, uh, as the media like to put it, where did things go so wrong, Pete? Well, it depends on your perception, whether <laughs> you look at it through the lens of being wrong or, you know, I, I don't like to live in those worlds of right and wrong or good and bad and, and you know, black and white, so to speak. I, I like to look at it through as many different perspectives of, as I can. And, you know, I have the perspective that everything is absolutely perfect and one of the things I'm often asked is, is how do you deal with such uh, scrutiny for your opinions and beliefs and views and perceptions out in the world? And I go, well, again, it comes back to your perception, you know, because I had it on the weekend, actually. I had a, uh, we, my wife and I were running a wellness retreat and we had a fellow there that was in his 70s and he said, you know, you, you've copped a lot. I said, well, it depends on which way you look at it. I said, all of that media noise and the, the game, so to speak, they're in an industry to create uh, headlines, to create more eyeballs looking at their content. They're in the business of delivering content because the more content and the more eyeballs, the more advertising revenue they get. So once you know the game, you know how to play it. And for me, as I said to this man, I said, without the media, I would never have been able to get this message out to as many people as I could have. And I use them as one of the tools that I have, or that any of us have, to be able to share a message. And when you come at it from the perspective that they cannot harm you in any way, you know, whether it be emotionally or physically, <laughs> hopefully it doesn't come to that, and um, that that is their game, you can, you can, I don't want to say manipulate it, but you can, you can play in that reality if you choose to. And I chose to, you know, I was already in the mainstream media for, I had a 20 year career uh, hosting cooking shows and, and cooking is just, uh, cooking television or celebrity chefs is just about sharing information. And the path that I chose was home cooked meals. And that eventually evolved into nutritious meals and then understanding how the body worked and sharing that information out there into the world. And I guess things started changing for me from the media point of view when I started talking about long-term regenerative health, you know, and when you see the game that the media is involved in, a lot of their advertising dollars come from multinational food companies. They come from either directly or indirectly from the medical pharmaceutical model, depending on which part of the world in which you are playing the game in. And um, we know that there's conflicts of interest between, say, the Dietitians Association and multinational food corporations. We know there's conflict of interest between pharmaceutical companies and medical associations or industries. We know that there's conflicts of interest between media and these outlets, all of this is being exposed. We know that there's conflicts of interest between politics and lobbying groups, whether it be the pharmaceutical, the agricultural, the um, chemical <laughs> industries, and so on and so forth. And there's these overlapping um, realities and, and facts and truths in which that game is being played. So when I started to talk about long-term regenerative health, how to look after our immune system, as you, as you pointed out, how to cook yourself healthy and maintain that health by perhaps eliminating certain food groups 
or eliminating certain products from your diet, whether it be seed oils, whether it be fluoride from your water that you're cooking with, whether it be this, that, and the other, whether you choose a a healthy sunscreen to put onto your body instead of one that has known carcinogenic effects. When we, when I started talking about that, that's where their narrative changed from Pete, the boy next door, um, sharing great recipes to, okay, here's somebody that is edu- actually educating people on something that, that is going against the narrative of potentially where our sponsors or advertisers have their vested interests in.